Uh, Marilyn Wilson here from RE Technology with today's coffee chat. Um, thank you for all of you that I'm sure there's somebody that have been here often. In fact, I've probably got a few thank yous. Yes, I do. Hello, Philip and Tim, I, my two most regular people here. Um, we've got a really fun, uh, another topic for you to, guys to talk about today. I'm, I'm really getting excited about um, the kind of advice that, that you're getting from our guests because they're giving you some really tactical kinds of things that make sense. G good morning, Mary. Nice to see you. Um, and we've got Albert Clark with you, one of my longtime friends from a company called Home Actions, and they do an electronic uh, newsletter with, but it's it's really got some unique things. Oh, hi Jerry, Jerry's here too. Thank you so much for coming. Um, so let me just jump in real quick and remind everybody if you haven't been on before, and I know a lot of people are using Zoom, so I want to get you back to go to meeting for a minute. If you click on that um, that blue bar that says questions, you, you'll see the little gray triangle. Click on that little gray triangle, and that will um, open up the question box and then you guys can uh, ask us questions so feel free to do that we uh, usually ask them or answer them right in real time so if it's something that you want to learn more about as um, albert's talking feel free to jump in okay um okay so just want to introduce him officially he is the president of homeactions.net you've been at that now for how many years albert long long time uh i've been in the technical side of the industry about 25 years uh mm -hmm. specifically on newsletters 19 years i built the first ever electronic newsletter for agents when we were uh, at e-neighborhoods and i've been oh, i wouldn't yeah. say stuck in that business but I've certainly been around it for about 19 years and home actions uh the the company home actions we started that about nine and a half years ago gotcha that's great so you know, you're. I know you talk to agents uh, and brokers all over the country all the time. What are you hearing these days? Just give us a quick your your gut check. How's the well, market doing? Uh, coming up? What's happening? In fact, you would most most people would think that some of our business was was hurt by the market. And in the last few weeks, we've noticed such a an increase in agents reaching out to us saying, "I should be communicating better to my sphere of influence, but what should I be sending?" And you can't send you know coronavirus, 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 but how to respond to it. So what we see is uh, after the storm clears, we see you know interest rates at three percent. We see homeowners that are thinking that their home values are going down, and the research that came out of NAR yesterday indicated that home values, home sales are going down, but home values are staying pretty much where they are, point or two off. So consumers are looking for that you know that's that safe hand, and they need to hear that from their real estate professional that the sky is not falling. Um, I was on the phone yesterday with my friends at NAR. They're already coming up with legislation for first-time homebuyer tax credits. So there's going to be lots of state and federal programs out there. And if the agent doesn't have a delivery vehicle or a communications plan to get in that house, somebody else is going to do it. So we're going to have some special content for our subscribers and really hit it home and help them manage their fears right now. And gotcha. they do that you know, by communicating with their uh, real estate professional. Gotcha. Okay. Well, let's jump in. Let's 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 talk a little bit more detail about this. So, um, Albert, just for your perspective, we had a great conversation yesterday with uh, a group called Prospects Plus that does direct mail communications. Um, so this is a different format for those that were on that one yesterday. There's some things that I, frankly, I like both systems, but I, I want Albert to explain what they do uniquely differently because I think it's it's really valuable too. So. Maybe let's just talk about this. Like, what what kinds of stuff are you hearing, and what kind of content do you have to help people with that? Yeah, and you know, to go over it again, again, homeowners in fear, they right. need to hear from their agent that things aren't falling out of the sky, and it's right. going to be okay on the other side of the storm. Now, right. there's going to be some pent up demand because everybody in the last month and a half that needed to get into a different home will eventually do that once we clear the storm. So um, I'm thinking, you know, we could portray that agent as an advocate, watching out for the concerns of the homeowner, not worrying about the sale down the road yet, but insulating their, their uh, database. We'll talk about databases shortly, but getting a pipeline that is insulated that no one else can attack. And it's all about good content and hyper-local content. That's what we specialize in. Well, and I, I think you're so right. We've talked about this before, but I, I think it's worth talking about again that and I just had the conversation yesterday with a friend of mine who's uh, very intelligent, but you know we're all getting bombarded with this doom and gloom content all over the place, right? The world's falling, seven million gazillion people out of work, you know. Other, we just hear bad news all day long, right? And, and most of us, I think, are smart enough now we're turning it off because it just gets me depressed. I know I do, um, but it's really important, I think, to share some of that, like the NAR stuff, right? That's 
easy, right? Take a look, right. grab it every in. Time, every time there's a problem with the uh, economy, Congress wants to stimulate home ownership. And it, it's obviously great because we know the multiplier effect on that money that the homeowners spend really helps right. the economy. So there's going to be all sorts of programs coming out, we think, you know, very shortly to get people into that home, maybe their first one. Uh, so in areas of the country where there aren't a lot of first time home opportunities, something else might have to be done. But for the large segment of the country, there are some first time home homeowners out there that would help that the that home seller move up to another house. OK, obviously right. more valuable, probably. So every time people move, it's good for the economy. Well, and I think people literally think that there's nothing being sold right now because you would that would be the logical conclusion you'd make based on all the bad news. Right. So even just sharing, you know, pulling a quick report out of your MLS and saying, hey, you know what? Sales in your market are up by blah or like you say, home prices are holding. All that kind of stuff is really important to underline because as we get I think at first we were just so shocked and so traumatized. And we didn't know we didn't know what to think about. Right. But now a few weeks into this, consumers are like, rut row, what does this mean? Right. So now it's your time to stand up and, like you say, be that advocate. So it's it's really helpful. And they have a great tool to do that. So. Right. I heard from a uh, tangentially from a an agent the other day. Uh, he was calling some people in his database, and there were people saying, "Well, are you still in business? How could a realtor still be in business with all this bad news?" Right. So exactly. If you're, not, if you're not really communicating with your client base, and I don't care what you send or when or how, if you're not out there, they're going to think you maybe got out of the business. And you know, what's that going to do for your pipeline? Yeah, like it, I mean, I think what you told me before the calls, this, your, your system sends something to them every two weeks. So if you could get in a good cadence of sending them something every two weeks and calling them, you know, at least once a month, and you're you're touching them three times a month. Number one, like you say, they know you're still in business, which is important. But also, you can track how they're feeling, and then you can adjust the the voice of what you use with them as you go to make sure that you're still giving them something that matters. But Right. So we, used to, uh, we used to try to do stuff once a month, but we find out there's too much clutter in the marketplace. And as you know, Gary Keller with this 20 with this 33 touch program, a lot of that mm -hmm. are emails throughout the year. So we've been, you know, and we talk to consumers and we say, is this too much? And they go, no, it's not too much because it's all new every two weeks. OK, so right. there's basically three things a realtor has to do. And I think we all agree on it. It's on the screen there. Prospect, nurture and close. But right. you have to have a system. and most agents just don't have a system. I think you might have a slide there of uh, all the locations where agents have their database or their contacts. They don't have a database. This yeah, this one. Yeah. Nine out of 10 agents in the country right now do not have a clean, reliable, updated database. When you ask them where it is, they say, oh, I have one, but it's in all these places here. And that's not a database. So what we do on day one when we work with agents is go into their Gmail, their MLS, their cloud, everywhere, and export those contacts, clean them up, take the duplicates out, take out info at macysdepartmentstore.com, the non-human ones, and then we right. give them a nice little list and they can scrub that if they want. And then what happens, Marilyn, if you can go back to that five-prong uh, approach there, go back one. Mm -hmm. Then we give them intelligence. After we start nurturing the contacts, we give them intelligence on what's going on inside of the database. Who should they stay in closer contact with? Because they're clicking on our uh, predictive content. You know, what's sold down the street? Is it a good time for me to sell? What's my house mm -hmm. worth? Those kinds of questions. And the people ask them, you know, so they must be interested in that topic. And then finally, what we do, which I don't think anybody else out there does, is guarantee that the contacts we put in the system for you will become exclusive to you. Nice. So email addresses can't be used twice. So consumers aren't going to see something coming from Howard Hanna and Keller Williams. Gotcha. And this, this is the, the, the approach we've been taking for the last few years. And it's working very well. We have about almost 5,000 agents throughout the country now on our platform. And that's exclusive to the email address or to the yes. zip code? or to no, the, no, 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 exclusive to the, to, the email, to the email address because yeah. once put in, it can only be used once. So we, we, we try to teach the agent there's a first mover advantage there. Got it. Okay, great. All right. Um, and uh, going back to this just for a second, too, I assume that you can help them pull uh, names off their phone or out of the MLS or anywhere they've got them. And, and sticky notes, so they can add sticky notes into this. Yeah, well, you, Marilyn, you'd be surprised how many agents aren't when you ask them, does your phone back up every night to the cloud? 
and they're like, they give me their phone, like, I don't know, here, go find it out. And I'd say <laughs> to them, well, are you are you sure you put email addresses in your phone? Oh, yeah, I put email addresses in my phone all the time. And I said, what would happen if I put that phone on the floor and stepped on it and crushed your phone? You know what they said? I'd go buy another phone. And I said, well, what about the data that's in this phone? Well, I don't know, Al. Can you, you know, can you? They actually ask me sometimes to call AT&T and Verizon to see if they're backing up their phone. And then when you mention, you know, do you have your Apple ID to get in the iCloud? What's mm -hmm. that? Where do I find that? So we, we get agents, you know, that spell computer with a K, put it that way. But so we there's still, so two things to the audience today. Before you do any of the stuff that Albert's talking about, go make sure your phone's being backed up, right? right. And make sure you can you know how to log into wherever it is being backed up. Those are two important goals, regardless of any of the stuff we're talking about. Okay, good. In about a, a half hour to get it all taken care of. But it, that's the dumb stuff that slows all of us down. Let's be honest. All of it, you know, we have data everywhere, passwords everywhere. It's like, where the heck is that stuff? I don't know. And which, like with us, with the GoToMeeting, we got like five different ones. Which one is it on? Even simple things like that can slow all of us down. So it's like. Right. And that's it, the reason why some agents don't use their CRM provided, you know, services. A lot of brokerages now are providing a free CRM to the agent, but they just give it to the agent and the agent's responsible for putting data content, if you will, into that. That's why on the Moxie Engage system, we're actually embedded with them every morning at 2.30, all the contacts in the Moxie Engage CRM will go over to Home Actions, all the contacts at Home Actions will go into Moxie Engage. So okay. it's a great way for an agent to get excited because they now have data. If they don't have data and there's nobody in their Engage system, they're not gonna adopt it. So TZ right. has a question. I think he's related to the iCloud backup we were just talking about. He said, is it the same as back being backed up on Gmail? Um, Gmail's a well, different- some, some phones can back up to Gmail, yes, depending right. on what your system is, but most of them yeah. back up to your carrier. So AT&T or Verizon or Sprint. Um, yeah. And then of course, the, the, for the Apple product, it's all iCloud. Everything backs up to the iCloud, but you have to turn it on and you have to have so many megabytes of free service, right? Because after those first 10 gigabytes, they start charging right. you. Right. So um, the agents have some decisions to make there, but they should decide to do something because there's valuable content in there. And Dennis says Android um, goes to Google Drive. Uh, uh, that may be true, I don't know. So that may, it may connect with Gmail. That makes right, sense. at that level, we don't help the agent actually do that because we'd be you know, on the phone for hours and hours. Um, so we help, you know, we have, usually there's a tech advocate in every office that'll help them do that. Yeah, and uh, Dennis was also saying that often broker-provided CRM gives you broker, broker broker access to your clients. That that's a whole other conversation, Dennis. You just opened up about well, big brother uh, and, items. <laughs> yeah, and some of them do, and some of them don't. I don't know which one you use specifically, Dennis. I can tell you that brokers always get upset when they hear that because none of them have the intention of stealing anybody's clients. But I know a lot of agents worry about that, and maybe some brokers actually do steal clients. I I can't speak to that, but but you're right. Having your own CRM, you know for sure that it's portable, right? If you go from broker to broker, right. you don't have to get anything back. Isn't it? There's no debate about that. Most brokers will let you move from one to the other, even if they own it. But it's a good point, Dennis. It's some, something that a lot of agents don't want to, they don't want to be connected to their brokers when it comes to their own client database. So, so in this context, you wouldn't have to be. You would say, all right, let's put them all in one place and figure out where that one place is, and then it can be loaded into a system like this. But again, you, uh, Home Access isn't gonna hold your database hostage either, right? You're, right? you're just doing it to facilitate it. Yeah, we'll help you move to another brokerage. We'll just swap out some graphics. But many many managers, you know, in situations where they think there's Big Brother, you know, looking over your shoulders, many managers are just, and brokers are just so happy that these guys are, you know, getting a database built, putting it in a system, building this pipeline, because that's where the future revenue is, even as a as a uh, office manager, right? Everybody gets incentivized when the agent right. scores more points. So Thank if you. an agent can do one or two incremental extra sales every year because of home actions, everybody wins, right? Exactly. So, and for those of you that are asking questions about how to do what, what we're just describing, hold on, because... You can, Albert will actually, that's one of the things these guys do, is they'll actually help you get all that stuff in one place. Um, Jerry just mentioned too, the top producer is a good one if you're looking for your own individual 
serum. He's been using it for years, and it's, a, it's like twenty nine ninety five a month. So, and that one's been. You're right, Jerry. Lots of I don't even know thousands. I think that's probably one of the biggest ones out there right now. Anyway, so let's go to the next slide, and uh, there's lots of great stuff here to talk about. Um, whoops, he keeps doing that. Okay, tell us about this, Albert. Yeah, this is a, a typical agent in Howard Hanna. We have about 500 Howard Hanna agents on our program. Uh, we mm -hmm. visited over 100 of their offices. And, mm -hmm. and what we want to show you here was consistent branding at the top to you know take, take along or write along with the branding that Howard Hanna likes. And this mm -hmm. is an example of just the top three stories. There's always eight or nine stories every two weeks that we put in here. The agent right. gets to see what the newsletter will look like days in advance. We send them an mm -hmm. update or day uh, notice. But you'll see this first article here. Um, what's sold down the street when and for how much? If it's one thing you can learn today, it's the consumers right. want to know what's sold down the street. Every agent gets the same questions. How's the market mm -hmm. and what's sold down the street? So right. what do we do? How do we title the first article? What's sold down the street? So this Pam King, um, whom I know very well, been working with her for two or three years. She um, sent us a bunch of zip codes. And when you open up that article and click on a zip code, you know what's gonna pop open? Everything that's sold in the last 15 minutes going back three months. Now that's data, Howard Hanna data in the back end. For right. other agents, we use RPR, okay? We mm -hmm. keep some okay. out of report out of RPR, save mm -hmm. it as a PDF, put it right on the newsletter. And the cool part is when somebody engages with this content, bing, 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 the agent gets a text or an email letting them know that Betty Jane Wilson just clicked on this article. And you'd say, why do I care? Well, I'm telling you that 40% of people clicking on this kind of data are warming up for a transaction. But Marilyn, we're trying, to, we're trying to make some other changes in the industry here where we want the consumer searching in front of the agent, not behind the agent's back on Zillow. Right. So a lot of our widgets in the newsletter, and there's some really cool hyper-local ones, they work everywhere in the country, but mm -hmm. the agent gets to see who is accessing what data and what they did with it and downloaded and shared. That's all done with our predictive metric reports in the back end. So again, great content. You can't get any closer or hyper local than down the street, right? Uh, so that's what we do. So that's just the top part of the newsletter, but it opens up right in HTML. There's no download. It's not a PDF newsletter. It mm -hmm. opens it up and full, you know, full demographics and full metrics every time somebody opens it in link. So we, we around here, we don't like to use the term hot leads. We don't, in fact, I tell my sales force, don't even think that these things are hot leads. These are conversation starters. And that's what most agents need these days to stay in touch with their uh, database because they now have something in common. You know that Mrs. Jones just read this article or downloaded this or asked for that kind of report. And that's what it is. So we help the agent get over that you know, for many agents, if you ever gave them the white pages and said, pick up the phone and call everybody in town and tell them you're a great realtor, they won't do that anymore. OK, so we make it a little bit easier for them because when they start the conversation, they've got something in common here. And it may be for somebody that just, you know, they haven't emailed them in two or three years. And I asked the agent, why? Well, what would I say? What would I call them? Tell them, I'm, you know, I'm the best realtor. They should deal with me. You've got to build that allegiance with your database. So when the topic of real estate comes up, they're going after you. They know how to get a hold of you because you're in their inbox every two weeks with something that's valuable. Exactly. Okay? So with a newsletter, I know this is just an example of one, but so let's say that I'm an agent that's um, you know maybe new to this, not real comfortable with the type of content that I should send or don't have a whole lot of, we're going to look at local content in a minute. Um, does Home Actions build it automatically for me? So if I said, yeah, I want that what's sold down the street because I, I don't know who wouldn't want that. That's always yeah. a great article, any, right? Any Can extra articles. Them so they don't have to deal with creating content every two weeks? No, and that's the biggest, you know, Achilles heel that agents have is what's good content. Well, we send right. out about six million a month. So we know sort of what gets open, click, shared, when, what time of day. So mm -hmm. again, we're gonna put all these special articles in for you and there's no extra charge for this because at the end of the day, that's what really creates the allegiance is that my realtor every two weeks tells me what's going on. So we have realtors that uh, literally have a newsletter for a particular subdivision. And, and at the top of the, as you can see the graphic there of the girl going up the stairs, this is a graphic of the, uh, the front gate of the subdivision, right, or the HOA. And they can go in, we, we can show them how to go into RPR and pull out specific information 
just for that subdivision. Burn it into a newsletter and you really are the neighborhood expert because every time these newsletters come to me, there's something about what's going on down the street on both sides. And yeah, that's we, what we, had a, we had an agent that did this kind of thing in our neighborhood. Um, and frankly, he wasn't the best agent in the neighbor in the area. In fact, well, it's a long story. He got in a lot of trouble down the road. But while he was doing it, he basically just claimed ownership of the neighborhood. Like he just claimed right. it. He didn't. I'm the neighborhood expert. And what happened was he got all kinds of business, even in a neighborhood where there were realtors that lived there. He mm -hmm. still would get deals. So yeah. it sounds dumb sometimes. You think how could that make such a difference? But I'm telling you, that guy he probably sold. There's probably 40 neighbor, 40 houses here. He probably sold 15 of them in like a period of five years because mm -hmm. he's the one that, that talked to us. And he had exactly that information. What sold down the street up to 15 minutes ago? And it wasn't even up to 15 minutes ago. He would do a monthly printed. Nothing is nearly as dynamic as this. Just with, uh, you know, who, what, what's listed, what's sold, what price. And everyone in the neighborhood would talk about it. Everything. It was like the anticipated thing. It sounds so simple, but it works. Yep. So, yeah, so anyway. we first the agent as that local expert, and we go out and we yeah. find this hyper local content and we curate it, bring it into the mm -hmm. newsletter, push it out. And the best part is tracking it all. Okay, if you're going to spend time yeah. having us put content in for you, we want to tell you who engaged with it. So, should we go to, um, do we want to look at this one and then we'll look at some oh, of yeah, those? Not, yeah, I, I don't know where you got this one from, but this is a very good one. Uh, we Absolutely. also try to, to get rid of some of the myths and you know untruths in the industry. And mm -hmm. that article on the right there, you know, do you have to have 20% down payment and perfect credit anymore to get into mm -hmm. a house? And we all know you don't, you know, you can get down payment stuff at six and 7%. So what happens is consumers still think they need 20%. So they're not ready to engage in the market until they get close to that. So I'll say to an agent, wouldn't you want to talk to 20 people that are looking for down payment money? And when right. they think about it, they're like, yeah, I would. Well, okay, there's 20 people that just read that article in your newsletter. Right, and we know who they are because they're in your database. So that's a perfect example of uh, predictive content. You only read that article as a consumer if you're interested in that topic, right? Right. So, so, if, so I can, I can. Speak. Got it. Now that this is great, and there's all different types of content like this, right? All different types of components of, like interest indicators, for lack of a better name. Yeah, like I don't know if you have this next one. Um, but there's another, uh, no, that's our article library. We'll talk about that in a couple seconds. Okay. But the other article would be, um, you know, tell me what my, how much home equity I have. Seven out of 10 homeowning families have no idea how much equity they have in their home. They mm -hmm. know it's good, right. but they're not taking that leap to put their house on the market until somebody gives them that magic number. Wow. And again, you don't want to come in behind my back from Zillow. We want it in front of the agent so the agent can see what the consumer is going through. Right? It can offer some assistance. So this slide uh, represents our, you know, obviously in our business, content is king. So right. we have a bunch of editors that keep their pulse on what's going on in home ownership, not mm -hmm. necessarily real estate, okay? And no chicken pot pie recipes, no moving day tips, Marilyn, you've seen those over the years. Right. Hard hitting, impactful information. So as an example, on the left there, you'll see our coronavirus articles. We have, that's a growing library of consumer oriented content. Mm -hmm. on how to get along with the um, with the issues we're dealing with now. So again, good content, consistently delivered, trackable, you know, that's what consumers want. Right. And agents aren't good at this stuff, okay? When I have yeah. a problem with my heart, I don't try to fix it myself or my teeth. I go to a professional. Right. So that's what we're trying to, you know, the analogy here is we'll just do it all for you. Well, I like all these these trigger articles. So. You know, you've got 111 on buying, 22 on home first time, 37 for investors, 16 on a retirement, et cetera, et cetera, right? While you're up in that one, I uh, had an agent the other day and she realized that about a third of her sphere of influence are 65 and above people. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, we've got a whole boatload of resources on issues important to those 65 and above. What right. to look for in a 65 community, what not to look, you know, things like that. So. We handle all the demographics of the homeownership perspective, I guess you'd call that. Gotcha. And if, if I wanted to, if I got real fancy with this, and not that you have to, but if I wanted to, like, if she knows who what, what third are the people that are 65 plus, can she target different newsletters to different parts of her database? 
Yeah, we have a we have a service called on target, which is a in between blast, if you will. Okay. So your newsletter goes out every two weeks. In that period, you could send out a blast and you could send it to everybody in your database or just my 65 and aboveers, right? Because you don't want to send 65 and above information to uh, millennials, right? They're not worried about retirement home yet. Got it. Okay. So there's ways to, to get, I mean, the simple thing is I could just say, you help me get my database in one place because we know that in and of itself is, fun, is not so fun. You help me do that. And then you say, okay, I'm, I'm going to take your standard newsletter w with the definition of the zip codes that are important to me or right. subdivisions that are important to me. And then you're going to, you meaning Home Actions is going to just put that out there every two weeks. And then yeah. if I get new people, you know, if I, uh, well, remember the days we used to have open houses, you know, even in a virtual open house, if I get people to register, then is it easy for me to continue adding names to my database? Sure. All they have to do is they could log it in with their own control panel. They could put it in on their phone. Um, okay. They can just email us and say, hey, met three people in an open house. We always want to encourage them to increase the size of their database, thus right. a bigger pipeline, which is now insulated. Even though the Joneses might not be moving for five years, they're going right. to hear from you every two weeks. Gotcha. So, yeah, we always help them put, put new members in. And then when we're constantly linking from these other sites, you know, Numbers go up. Again, remember it's a numbers game. Real estate is a numbers game. Right. The more the, the more people you have engaged, the more likely you're going to have a deal at the end of the at the end of the month to pay your mortgage, right? Yeah, I'm right. with you on that. Okay, let's talk about this. This is a fun thing too, especially right now, because a lot of people are doing absolutely wonderful humanistic support to their neighborhood. What tell us about this? Right. This is a uh Deanne Hopple uh is a manager for Howard Hanna outside of the uh, Harrisburg area. And she mm -hmm. got all the offices together over the last couple of weeks, raised a lot of money, and is now providing breakfast and lunch for all the first responders in mm -hmm. the uh, three hospitals in their area. Hershey nice. might be one of them. And uh -huh. so I saw that and I said, hey, I picked up the phone and called Deanna. And I said, Deanna, great PR story. This is great, but it's only being seen in the Pennsylvania Association of Realtors magazine, right? Deanna right. happens to have 2,800 people in her database, consumers, okay, past clients, friends, whatever. So mm -hmm. we pushed it in there and we got many more eyeballs because how many people get the Pennsylvania Association of Realtors daily blog? So it's a great way to tell any kind of story at all to your readership because mm -hmm. you tell it in graphical and, you know, links and everything else. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. of course, it's all tracked. So she knows who opened these articles. But at minimum, it's a great PR story, what they're doing. We just elevated that to more eyeballs. No, oh, that's great. It, there's there's people doing some really cool things right now. And it's not just right now. I mean, realtors are, they're very generous people, let's be honest, right? They they love their communities. That's the ones mm -hmm. that do the best. And I'm, I know many of them are on the call. It's They love what, what goes on. And whether that be even just something to help one person. And, you know, people don't always, and I understand this, don't do it for the press, right? You're not, right. You're not being nice the press but with something like this that's already packaged and if it's if it's a program you know the other thing if, if you're one of those types and i kind of feel that way sometimes you don't want to be like me 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 aren't i great i'm so helpful right. but if there's a way that you can help a charity or an organization raise money by generating this so you can talk about the fact you're involved with it but but the real net takeaway is i want you to help me with this particular challenge or not for profit because they need help right so you get credit but you're also helping the organization you love and care about. And so it's not as like me, 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 right? Some people right. get- We've worked with some agents and managers who are into the, you know, the cancer, American Cancer Association, all these kinds right. of do-good organizations. And they ask right. for, you know, and we link them right to their GoFundMe page or whatever they want. But it's a great way to get the message out there. You don't want to be too salesy. You're And you're right. You don't want to exploit the fact that it's public relations. But, right. you know, it's good PR at the end of the day yeah i mean this kind of content especially right now i think anything that makes us feel good and warm and fuzzy is so welcome compared to all the other garbage that we're reading and so wouldn't, you, wouldn't you want to be the pizza store down the street look at all those pizzas well that too the, that's exactly i was going to say that's another net benefit is you're helping keep restaurants and you know coffee shops and in, in business which is really important right now too okay yeah. should we jump to the next slide so tell us about this this is cool too yeah, a new service, I won't say it's a new service, but it's new to a lot of our large brokerages we work with is BuySide. And for those of you on the call, it's a great tool 
but what we're telling you is tools are only good if they're getting adopted by consumers. So this is how we want the, we can educate the consumer base and tell them that this agent's got new tools and one being buy side, which helps consumers, which helps people you know, understand that if they list their house with this particular realtor, this realtor already has people who wanna buy a house like mine in this part of town, four bedrooms and good schools. Okay, so buy side has lots of features but one of them is work with me because I'm a buy side realtor. I've got people already that want to buy your house. So again, so this article, as soon as it's clicked, Marilyn, mm -hmm. a text or an email goes to the agent so he can call back Mrs. Jones, who just read this article on why you want to look into buy side. So this is a, a good example of what I, I've, I've been talking about quite a bit on these for those of you that have been on the call more than once. Um, your brokerage, the franchise that you work with and your local multiple listing service and association all offer you cool stuff, some of which you may never have even looked at before, right? Because we all get busy and we see all those little boxes on the, you know, the homepage when we click into the MLS, but we don't do that. But there's a lot of ideas like this that you could, you know, click on some of those boxes. We've talked about this before. Get some training on those things. Because you can use them as differentiators. Just because everyone in the MLS or just because everyone in your brokerage has access to them does not mean they're all using them, right? Sure. So be the one that says, I'm using it. And you can take, you can make it a competitive advantage, even though you're not paying $1 for it other than your normal, you know, normal dues that you pay. So it's kind of cool. Okay, let's yeah. talk what about seeing, Marilyn, what we're seeing now is agents that want to put in sort of their Angie's list, their roofer, their plumber, their contractor, right. their in office right. loan officer, right? Yeah, it could build be it. anything. Anything yeah, that you build have that professional that's... network. Yeah, exactly. Now let's talk about this. This is really great too. About yeah, you know. Um, again, remember before I said we don't get into chicken pot pie recipes and moving day tips. This is right. what we get into. This is what I have our editors. Uh, we have their pulse on everything that's going on here. And this is what we call home ownership. Okay, this is more than real estate. Home right. actions is not a real estate newsletter, although you'd think we are. We're more into home ownership and getting more value out of the home. And you have to keep up on all this stuff if you want to increase the value of your home and become a, a smarter consumer. So this is what we cover all these topics and we're able to write a bunch of stories every two weeks that hit home, that are about the home and everything around the home. That's why we got Home Actions as the title. All the mm -hmm. things that go on that create or that you know make up home, very actionable. We cover all these actions and what's going on at the home. So, so you're um, bringing all this content though. So each individual agent doesn't have to be an expert. They just have to use the content where you're showing them how to yes. demonstrate that they're an expert, right? So yeah, it's a lot less work. Summarizes all the articles. This summarizes yeah. all the articles we would build for the agent. Got it. Okay, good. So yeah, I mean, I this is the kind of stuff I would love to get from realtors. I don't get anything like this where it's helping me understand, you know, how to how to take my most valuable asset and make it more valuable or to protect it against some downside like identity theft or yeah. who knows well, that's it's really helpful okay let's look at the next one so this is really fun too tell us how this works yeah this is for the agent that says al my newsletter went out yesterday you know call me tell me what i should do who should i be in contact with right now so right. Um, we already went through i think we already had this slide up right well no, anyway no. this indicates 1336 emails we sent out for this agent 615 mm -hmm. unique opens but if you look at that little number to the right there total opens is 1016. what we're able to prove to the agent is that half of their readers will open up the newsletter multiple times over the next mm -hmm. few days and weeks and how do we know that is well we prove it to the agent because they can come into their control panel right here look at that mm -hmm. number on the right there the short red arrow 58 trigger articles that's mm -hmm. 58 articles that were opened by consumers that we deem, we or the agent deem to be um, integral to marketing to that consumer. So the idea is the 58 people send alerts to the agent saying, I just read this article, or I just downloaded this report, or I just did this, and we track all that. So on the next slide, I think you, yeah. Yeah, what I actually, one thing I just wanna mention really quickly here, that just for those that don't do email marketing all the time, a 45% open rate is really high. Really That's about high. three times the industry average. Exactly. So, like, to get people to even click on it, they do nothing else but see your face. That's right. valuable, right? But anyway, no, it's I, valuable I, just to have your e name in their email. And then exactly. we go further than that. Um, yeah, so then so this, back to this one again. Yeah, 28 people. The middle red arrow there. 
28 people wanted to know what sold down the street in the last 15 minutes. And most agents yeah. can't come up with all this. So we just automate it for them. So then those it tells you who. So you click on the who, it'll tell you who's actually interested in what's going on in the marketplace. So then if you call them, you can go, hey, I saw that you just opened this up. I wanted to tell you a little bit more about what I'm seeing. Here's what the data says, but here's what kind of what's behind the numbers because I'm the local expert. Right? It gives right. you a place to start the conversation. Sure. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, good. Well, this is this is really fun stuff. Um, and I love the idea that it's like you say, a home ownership newsletter as opposed to a sales well, newsletter. <laughs> right. We've talked about a lot about this, that in this time right now, you absolutely cannot be a pushy real estate agent. But frankly, you really never should be a pushy real estate agent, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, nobody likes that salesperson that's in their face. That's like, you know, me, me, me. Tell me, tell me. I, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. Tell me why I should work with you. Right. You can say you're great, but you can say it in much more subtle ways like this. Just demonstrating that you know what the heck is going on in the marketplace. Right. That's a lot mm -hmm. more effective than like. Did I tell you that I'm the number one? <laughs> right? I, nobody wants to hear that stuff anymore. It's just, it just doesn't work. It's just not who we are. We're, we're we're so much more used to genuine kind of conversation that it's just not relevant. Right. Okay. So uh, we we're hitting on the on the close to eight nine forty five. So let's go through these quick and then um, I don't see if there's any other questions, guys. Oh yeah, there is some questions coming in. Go ahead. Um, I think we talked about this slide already, Marilyn. Did we? We ran it twice. No, you and I talked about it. Oh, <laughs> we that's right. about the Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, do you have a question um, on there from a reader? Uh, we're going to talk about costs, but let's let's get through this, and then you can fill them in on how okay. that works. This is um, our response to Zillow's taking out ads in most parts of the country now that say you don't need realtors anymore. Uh, we're going to save you a lot of money. We have all the information realtors have. Just come to Zillow. So we took all these reasons. And we said to the agents, we're going to build you a tool and put it in. It's a widget and it goes in every newsletter. I think you might have that in the next slide. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. The consumer will be able to pull up any address, 150 million street addresses. Okay. There aren't any more out there than 150 million. Mm -hmm. so, and then we know everything about the neighborhoods around those 150 million street addresses. So this is what we call a deep data dive. A consumer opened your newsletter, went to a widget, opened the widget, did a report on 123 Main Street, sending a signal to the agent that this eight, this consumer is doing a deep data dive on his listing. And there's all sorts of information. There's Googles of information that are coming up on, in this report that pops open right on their screen. The agent doesn't have to do anything. The agent can actually print out these reports. If anybody on the call, send me, you'll have my email address shortly. Send me an address any address in the country, and I will pull up this really cool report. You've not seen anything like it. And of course, the only way consumers can get it is if they're in your home actions, right? Okay, so, so we have a, have, have a specific ahead, question, Albert, for you that I think is a good one for, um, and I know Jerry's got a CRM and a lot of people probably do. So how does this interface, if, if I already have a, a CRM product, client relationship management, for those that don't know what that word means, it's another buzzword we tend to throw around a lot. Um, whether that comes from my brokerage or I bought my own, like Jerry has, where he's bought top producer, how does this interface? So like, how do I, is there a way, like you said, like 28 people clicked on a certain thing is, does that information somehow interface so that I could look at my CRM and go, it looks like, you know, uh, Joanne that just, that, it, you know, she's been in my newsletter quite a bit. She's warming up. Do they connect at all or how, how does that yeah, work? Well, we're, we're, we're to the degree we can do that right now, we can put all this open and click data in any just about anywhere else they wanted to. But I think what you're getting at is true integration. So when somebody opens right. up this article, will it show up that this consumer in my CRM? So we're working with some CRMs right now. We're into our second stage uh, integration with Moxie Engage. But the other big ones out there are Sync, um, uh, KV Core. Mm -hmm. um, and there's two or three other ones that we're talking to to figure out APIs and all that stuff to share this data. We love sharing all this open click and share data because right. if to the degree that it can be used and I won't say exploited, but taken advantage of by the agent, right. the better off we're going to be. An agent would never want to leave this combination CRM and home action system. Well, and it's it, 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 the idea that you're making all these things work together, right? So I don't want to have to manage a whole bunch of customers records and you know interest levels here and do it in my crm the point of the crm is to have all of that so 
I'm glad right. to hear that you're trying to make those into one seamless connection because this is another indicator of interest, right? So if I have a website and I have a way to, for people to register for getting home alerts, right, on a particular type of search, and a lot of people have that, right? Yeah. That many times connects into a CRM, right? So I can see that, you know, Marilyn Wilson just looked at that house at 123 Main Street 42 times in the last three days. Marilyn Wilson's probably interested in that house, right? And it's going to give me an excuse to call and say, hey, there's a great house on 123 Main Street. Maybe we should check it out. That's what I think everybody's asking for. I think this in and of itself is really helpful because it's brand awareness and it's it's neighborhood ownership, right? Neighborhood dominance. And particularly for that one person, since it's exclusive, it's really helpful, but it gets even better to Peter's point when they become one thing. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. And I think then we're gonna, um, yeah, let's do this and then let's go to your questions because I have a yeah, few questions. Perfect. That's, you know, that's the question I get all the time when we're in front of agents, when we used yeah. to fly around the country. Remember that, Maryland, and see agents and brokerages? Um, what what I'm getting right now, and we're doing webinars literally, you know, five or six a day. And the idea there is an agent would, after he sees the rep, sees the presentation, says, "Well, Al, if I buy your program, how many houses am I going to sell?" Right. And I tell them, "I'll give you my Zillow answer between zero and a hundred. I have no right. idea how many houses you're going to sell. I want you to do one or two more than you would not have done if you didn't use our program." Right. And then slam dunk after that. So, and they say, well, okay, well, I'll try it out for a couple months. And we're like, no, don't buy this for a couple months. If you're going to get into nurturing and the true nature of nurturing, you have to hang on to this thing for a while, okay? That's why we have agents that have been with us for seven, eight, nine years now. They've sold multiple homes to people in their database. Mm -hmm. So there's about, a, I can come up with a dozen more ways to arrive at a return on investment just based on what you guys saw in the last 45 minutes. Right. So know that getting your name out there is important, but when you attach good content to it and there's engagement, the value of that relationship or that allegiance goes up, up, and up. And that's what we're all about is saying nurturing is a lifetime experience. No one's right. ever needs to be denurtured, right? You know, I don't even think that's a word. But the idea is once we get them in your pipeline, nurture that relationship and make sure that they can't get stolen by anybody else. And we do that through the email exclusivity. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but then you, you have to be there in the long haul. And that's not, again, it's not something you can create in two months. But it's again, if you've never done this before, you help them get all their, uh, everybody on the call, you help them get all their database, all their people in one spot. Because that in right. and of itself is a daunting task. I, I can tell you in my own business, you give up on that. Because as soon as you go down that road, you're like, oh, this is so much work, forget it. So right. you help them through that first piece. And then... If you don't have any idea what to send, at least initially, right, you just do it for them. So you know you put your brand in there, you get your database in there, that every two weeks they're going to get a ping from you of some sort. It's that. Maybe send and forget it, right? Many agents send have forget. Send and forget it. Just, send, just make me look good every Tuesday at 6 o'clock in the morning. And that's Perfect. what we sell at. Yeah. Okay, got it. So um, we had a few questions about cost and things. So I think probably the fastest way to answer those is um, if, if they just send you a quick email or go to yeah, home. Send me an email. We've got a, um, a special running now where we're waiving the setup fee, normally a $99 setup fee. Okay. So we can waive that. It used to be had it in April, but we'll, we can keep it over for a couple more days in May. And just email me and then I'll get back to you. Um, many agents want to know if this works for teams. And yes, it works for teams. Mm -hmm. um, we could be on this call for two hours and still not cover everything we do. Um, but if you want to fire me a quick email or a phone call, uh, I'll get back to you with the pricing, talk to you live, and then literally okay. we'll start building your database this afternoon. That's how so, fast. A uh, couple quick questions. Do you have customer support? I think that's a resounding yes, correct? Yeah, nine to nine and then nine to two on the weekends. In which time zone? Uh, Eastern. I'm sorry. Okay. I know. You guys in the East forget about us. Well, the action is. I mean, we're you're still <laughs> drinking coffee. <laughs> We're a little beyond that. We're worried you're, about it. We're happy hours. Five houses by the time I get my coffee. I know. Um, yeah. Peter's asking, is it free and does it come with NAR? Didn't you have some sort of an NAR promotional something or other at one point? Do you oh. still have that? Um, don't ever, never had a free offer and never dealt with uh, NAR. I don't know okay. where you get that from. Um, okay, good. So just just simple because a lot of people are asking, what's the simple? If I wanted to do your, you know, your serve your two every two weeks, and with you you getting my database in order and you sending the the content for me, what's the how does that work for an individual agent? 
You mean the, the how much would it cost? Yeah. Oh, okay. If we waive the setup fee, you'd be paying. For, we'll give you them a special price because they're with uh, with your organization. Uh, okay. Sixty nine dollars per month on the monthly plan. So sixty nine every month. Okay. And they could cancel at any time on that plan. Okay. And then we have a quarterly plan, which I'll work up for you. We'll, we'll make it obviously uh, as lucrative. And okay. then the idea is that you can pay for it every three months. So we give you an annual discount, but we let you break it up in four chunks. Gotcha. So just give me a call and I'll be able to customize something for you. And then if anybody else in your office joins, we've got a referral program where they earn extra months of service. Um, just, yeah, simply it could, it could all start with just emailing me at that address and I'll okay. get back to you as soon as possible. Sure you, make sure you mention Coffee Chat or RE Technology or Maryland or something that you remember from today. So they'll make sure to waive that setup fee for you. We don't want you to have to pay if you don't need to. Right. Um, okay, good. Um, okay. <laughs> Robert says, to those in the east, anything west of the Allegheny Mountains doesn't matter. I agree, Robert. I grew up in Buffalo, so I'm, I was east of the mountains. But I agree with you. That's so true. It's still snowing um, in Buffalo, I think. <laughs> no, I we, was eight there yesterday. We just visited a bunch of, uh, I, during the middle of the winter, I was in Buffalo, Maryland. So I know what it's like. We we launched the, uh, the Howard Hanna region up there. And, yep. you know, nothing, didn't bat an eye. What's a foot or two snow? Nothing, no problems at all. And here I am from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Sometimes it, you know, it does snow here, but not two feet. Not like that anymore. Well, don't pick on my hometown. All yeah. right. So for those that uh, okay, that come with us every day, if you click oh, open the chat with that little gray triangle, and you'll see the links. Tomorrow we've got, um, um, is it tomorrow? Yeah. You're um, uh, actually on Friday. Um, we, we have Brian Tepfer, and he is the uh, CEO or president of, Rapitoni MLS, which is one of the MLS systems that some of you may have, he's going to talk to you about all the different ways to use MLS systems to generate leads and, and prospecting. And there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do. Again, I want you guys to, to learn how to take advantage of these things you're already paying for anyway. And then um, ironically, on Monday, we've got Byside, who Albert was just talking about. The CEO of Byside is going to talk about how you can sort of you know curate uh, qualified buyers that you can you can bring as in your little basket when you go to a listing presentation to say, hey, you should work with me because I've got a list of qualified buyers that I know that are interested in your particular home. Um, and yeah, if you want to share this with a friend, um, grab one of those and you will, uh, you know, then you can let them know too. And if there's anybody that wants us to register you for all of them automatically, drop, drop your email in there and uh, we'll just make it happen for you so you don't have to think about it. They just show up in your inbox and if you like it, you take advantage of it. If not, you'll get a recording not down the road. And speaking of recordings, um, for those that have, have not seen this before, um, if you go to YouTube and type in RE Technology Inc., exactly the way I have it on the screen, subscribe to the YouTube channel and then hit that little bell right next to the subscribe word, you'll get notified of all of the Coffee Chat recordings and the webinars that we do. Um, so if you want to share it with someone or if it was something you want to re you know, remember who it was or you want to, you know, for whatever reason, if you want to have them, you know, feel free to do that. Um, many of you may have free MLS subscriptions or a subscription to RE Technology through your MLS, and it's actually a $200 annual fee. Uh, it, go into your MLS, look at their link beds, or go to their SSO, or just send them an email and say, hey, can I get out in RE Technology, because you'll get all kinds of daily content from us if you want it. If not, uh, we'll give you a free three-month subscription right now, so you go to retechnology.com. Right up in the right hand side, you'll see a little thing, a thing that says create account. Go up there, click on the monthly option, which that's important, and then use one of these um, codes and you'll be able to get the free content from us as well. So thanks to everybody that was here today. Thank you, Albert. This is a, a really, really good program. Um, I think we might have one more question or maybe just some emails coming through. Um, let's see. Well, Marilyn, if they, want to, if they want a deeper you know, dive into what we have, we're going to be doing a webinar in a couple weeks, right? They can, they'll get notified yeah, of that. So we're, yes, we're going to go much more. This is just a, you know, a coffee chat, as you guys know, but we're going to go through the whole system in much more detail and we'll you know, reinforce some of the things we said today, but we'll show you some very specific examples of the way you can use this in your business and the way other highly successful agents and brokers have used it in their business and teams as well. So. Um, Anyway, thank you. Robert says, uh, thanks for doing these. You're well. Best to you, Victor. And Sparkles. I love that you know who Sparkles is, Robert. That's my daughter. Um, so anyway, great day, everybody. Thank you, Robert, for, or Robert. <laughs> thank you, Albert, for coming. And uh, again, tomorrow we've got some some great new content coming up for you. So tune in again. Thanks, everybody. Okay. See you thank tomorrow. You.
Have Thanks, a good day.